Ooh, ah, oh, yeah. Let's do this. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back in once again. And as promised, we are back with another knife from A. Purvis Knives from Adam Purvis. Uh, this time it's going to be his Primordial Mark III, and I'm very, very excited about that. But before we get into it, I just have to do a little bit of house cleaning here. It's the kind of shit that I really, really despise doing, and I've really never done. But unfortunately, the way YouTube and their dumb algorithms are working, my videos aren't being seen. Uh, even subscribers are not being alerted. So listen, here's what you need to do. You need to subscribe. Yes, you need to like the video. If you like the video, if you don't like it, don't like it. But like the video. And if you have anything at all that you want to say, make a comment down below. When that happens, more people get to see the videos. It's ridiculous. I've gone almost a decade doing this and never having had to say that one time. But that's where we are nowadays in 2021. So there's that. Also, link down below to join my Patreon if you want to be a patron and help support the channel. And also, if you want to win really cool stuff like knives like this, you'll get that opportunity only by being a patron. Okay, all that housekeeping is out of the way. What we're going to be taking a look at today is something really slick and really cool. Now, I promised in the uh, A. Purvis Zerks video... That I promised that something special was coming, uh, and that is this. And I'm really, really stoked about this knife. Um, it came with a lot of surprises. Number one was going to be the size. I was not expecting the size that it is. I was also not expecting the weight, nor was I expecting the price. And there's also a sweet-ass little upgrade uh, that I will be discussing with you as well. So we're going to start the video. We're going to go down to the tabletop like we always do, get into detail, then I'm going to stop and I'm going to do a little transformation. No, not me. <laughs> I know what my gender is. <laughs> little transformation on the knife that I think a lot of you are really going to dig, especially those of you that are going for the all black variant. And uh, it's a really cool upgrade. It's very slick, very nice, and uh, adds a little bit of polish to it, and it's something that I wasn't really expecting, and I'm very glad to see. So, without any further ado, let's get into the A. Purvis Knives Primordial Mark III. My God, that's a mouthful. That's what she said. Let's take a look at some uh, photos, and then we'll get into the tabletop review right about now. All right, getting a closer look, we'll start with the packaging. Now, as I said before, this is not the first time we've had one of Adam's knives out here. This is the same packaging that you saw on the Zergs video that I uploaded just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, plain on the outside, nothing really there, but his logo is present. We'll get this open. You gotta, gotta give it a little shake. Shaky, shaky, shaky. I'm so excited to get into this thing because this is really... This is a knife just chock full of surprises. All right, let's get that going. A lot of suction going on there. Typically, I'm a fan of suction, uh, but not when I'm trying to get this open. Is that upside down? There we go. So there is sticker number one. Ooh. And sticker number two. We all like stickers. And there is the knife. And I got to tell you, the first... Big surprise that I had on this was this. How tiny the frame is, how tiny the handle is. Now, 
This is a three and a half inch blade, but the overall length is only 7.7 inches. Now, what makes that so unique is a typical three and a half inch bladed knife uh, could be as large as eight to 8.2 inches in overall length. So what you've got here is the shortest possible handle. That tip goes all the way to the very, very end, but obviously you're not going to hit it. You're not going to tip yourself when you're playing with it. It is so small in the hand. It's, it's crazy. I love the fact that you've got a very, very compact knife with a really large blade. It makes the blade look larger than it is. When I saw pictures of this knife and I first started talking to Adam about it, I assumed it was a fairly large knife. I'm thinking three and three quarter to four inch blade just because of what it looked like when I saw it in the images. And I was completely shocked when I opened the box. The second thing that shocked me is the weight. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Let's get through the basic specs first. So this is the all black PVD model. So he sells this one for $320, which is Asinine. This should be a lot more money, at least $375 to $400 to keep up with what everybody else is doing in these same basic uh, materials, same kind of finish. He is a, a good bit below market price compared to everybody else. So if you're looking for value, this is absolutely a great way to go. So you got a three and a half inch M390 blade. That is 150 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's not too terribly thin. Uh, so it, it, it does still seem robust and strong, but it's not overbuilt by any stretch of the imagination. This is going to be uh, very, very lightweight and easy to carry. The pocket clip on here is titanium with the black PVD coating. The frame is all black PVD coated titanium. And then you have these really, really awesome sections of carbon fiber. It has kind of a marbled carbon fiber look, but it's not marbled. Um, he doesn't list the name of the pattern or who the supplier is, uh, but this is a really special, unique carbon fiber. It's very, very cool. And then you have all the slots, all the venting that's been cut into it. So she's a slotty little girl. I like slotty little girls. Uh, let's see, you've got the captured bearing pivot, so you've got a very, very, very smooth action, which is good because it's not a flipper, so you're able to open this slowly or quickly, depending on how you want to open it, with that very, very large uh, opening there on the blade. I know a lot of people were going to want to do that, that stupid spidey flick. I can't stand that shit, so I do it with my thumb. That's just how I roll, man. That's how I roll. Now, uh, let's let's show you what I was talking about as far as the sizing goes. Let's put this up here. I'm going to bring out another three and a half inch bladed knife. And we're going to put these butt to butt as all things should be. And you'll notice that the Zeba here, this is the S5 Chess, is considerably larger in its overall length. However, the blade is the same. So it really is in that, that truncated handle that makes all the difference. We'll bring out another. This is the, uh, the Jerry Moen Mongoose. And then once again, we're going to be, ah, we're going to be in the same situation. We uh, put them butt to butt. The Mongoose is uh, noticeably larger, but we back it up here, pivot to pivot. The blades are almost identical in their size. Now, here's the part that's going to shock you. Let's give you one more size comparison uh, just for scale. There we go. And there is your banana for scale. The other thing that's going to surprise you, at least it surprised me, and it, it, still, it still blows me away, is the weight. Now, the weight is not listed on Adam's website. So what I've done is to satisfy all of you that just won't shut up about, oh, you really need to get a scale. Okay, I got a scale. Now check this out. That's all zeroed out. Oh, man. 
four ounces. Let's put that into perspective. Titanium frame lock, also with a three and a half inch blade, five ounces. Okay. Three point three ounces. This is this has been one of my lightest weight knives that I own. Now we're going to go even smaller. This is my old custom uh, Moen Panther from uh, years ago. Another one that I've always considered to be a very lightweight knife. 3.6 ounces. Let's do this again. 3.4 ounces. Guys, that is ridiculous. And since the banana is four scale, let's see what it weighs. 7.5 ounces. So... Your squeezy banana. It's for scale. It's for the scale. All right. Dad jokes aside. Let's get this out of here. And get back to the knife. The weight is insane. And that has a lot to do with you have slim titanium on both sides. Everything is milled out and slotted. So the titanium is slotted here. Carbon fiber is slotted on the other side. When you close this, by the way, you can see the blade. Hello. Hello, governor. And your backspacer is carbon fiber. So this is... I, I, I mean, my God, I, I just can't believe how light it is for the size of blade that you've got. Let's give you some close-up looks here. One thing about black is uh, it shows every little speck of dust. You should have seen me trying to photograph this bastard. Oh, my God. Love that top swedge that was ground in there. Very slick. Very cool. Adds a lot of personality to this blade. I love that uh, you've got a nice, nice deep belly to the blade. Another one of my favorite features is the, uh, the pivot. The pivot has the uh, Purvis logo right in there. And then look at the sculpting of the titanium. Nothing about this knife is boring. Sculpting in the carbon fiber to match. My camera's having a hell of a time focusing. Sorry about that, guys. Let me back it off just a little bit here. There we go. Look at that sculpting. Just slicker than snot, man. There's the backspacer. Sculpted pocket clip, too. Look at that. The bevels that are cut into that. More sculpting there in the lock. And every time you scallop out areas like that, you're reducing weight. That's why this thing is so utterly, insanely lightweight. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And I love the fact that it's so compact that I can hide that in the palm of my hand. Just gorgeous. I love the all-black look there. Now, there are some different choices. There's uh, Micardo with a satin finish. There's, I think there was carbon fiber. Then it had a stone wash finish. There's a couple different variations. But here's one thing that's also going to surprise you. Toot, toot. Oh, yeah. So you can get the knife for $320. If you decide, hey, I need to pimpify this a little bit, change out the backspacer and the clip with Zerkutai for only $175. And this is no basic clip. This is also sculpted in the same way that the pocket clip on the knife is. Take a look at the backspacer. And now what I think is, is just begging to be done is uh, I think now at this point, I'm just going to have to get my camera to focus. I'm just going to have to switch this out and, and show you just how cool that's going to look against the all black. Uh, I, I have to thank Adam for, for tossing those in. When we were talking about doing this video, after I did the Zerks video, I'm like, 
I'm like, man, you're you're known for making your custom clips. We got to kind of pimp this out a little bit and do one of your custom clips. He's like, well, I've got an, a more interesting thing for you. He goes, we're actually offering as a factory option, so you don't have to pay custom prices or wait custom wait times. As a factory option, when you order your uh, Primordial Mark III, you can also order the Backspacer and Clip Kit and get a little dash of color. How cool is that? I really dig that option. Let's take a look and see how it looks with that little pop of color added. I mean, holy shit, right? That really is a wonderful pop of color. Now, it's pretty subtle. You know, you're only changing out the clip and the backspacer, so it's not anything crazy. You're not replacing the screws. You're not replacing the pivot. You're not doing anything else that's too wild. And honestly, for the price, what you're going to spend to do that, I think is amazing. It's $175 for the Zerkutai upgrade kit. And I would tell pretty much everybody, you know, really depending on the color choice that you've gone with, I would tell pretty much everybody, it's worth the upgrade. Do the upgrade. You're probably not going to change back and forth often because you do have to disassemble the entire knife in order to get the backspacer in, which by the way, you're going to have to do um, the same thing to get the pocket clip off too. So it's not like... It's a it's a two second thing. It's going to take you a few minutes, and you want to make sure when you put it all back together that uh, you know you've got your blade centering on and everything else. So it does present its own uh, unique challenges when doing that if you've never taken a knife apart before. But to be perfectly honest, on the all black version, this should be a requirement. It should be a necessity. While it looks really good, all, you know, phantom, all blacked out, I really like that look. I like the fact that I've got this all blacked out look on the knife, and it's only when I choose to look at this side that I've got that one small pop of color, and then again, a little bit here on the ass end. So, in my opinion... For the all black, this is the way to go. You know, if I did, you know, maybe the the ones that have the micarta, I don't know that it goes as well with that particular color of micarta. And I could be wrong. It might. Look at that. Ah, get open. Get open. There we go. All right. It's like I'm sitting here. I've been fidgeting all day, and I'm just going to screw it all up when I'm on camera. So overall, what are my thoughts on this knife? Number one, I believe that it is a truly fantastic value. Uh, as I mentioned, this should be a good $50, $75, maybe even $100 more to be in direct comparison with so many of the other knives that are out there in similar materials and maybe similar finishes. I think that you've got a wildly unique look with the venting that has been done. Uh, and as far as how lightweight it is, it is truly, truly insane. I love all the extra detail work. This did not need to be done. I mean, let's face it. They could have just done a regular slab-sided piece of titanium, uh, added the carbon fiber, called it a day, and it would have still been a damn cool knife. But to have the extra features milled into this or ground into this, beveled into this. Uh, I, I believe it makes it a standout. It makes it a little bit more, I don't want to say an art piece because it's not, but a little bit more of a creative artistic representation of what the overall aesthetic of the knife is. Uh, it goes well with the really nice grind on the top clip. The whole thing flows together well. It's got a great balance in the hand. It's got a great balance visually. It's extraordinarily easy to carry. 
and it's very compact for the size of blade that it is. As I showed you earlier, compared to the Zeba, you've got a significant size difference when it's folded up. It's just, it's remarkable. So it takes up a lot less room in the pocket, if that's a concern for you. So overall, I find it easy to carry, easy to use. Uh, if I had one wish, it would be that it's a flipper. But uh, as Adam told me, the Mark II's were flippers, and uh, he decided to go with the manual opening for the Mark III. And you know what? These days, you don't find a lot of manual openers that are nice to open slowly outside of maybe a Sabenza. And even with the Sabenza, you know, we all tend to flick those anyway. And, and sure, as you see me do, I flick this more often than not. But I, I really like the fact that if I want to, I can just open that slowly. I can open it quickly. Uh, it's very, very smooth. It's got the perfect detent for a manual opener. Uh, and I don't believe, I, I think, yeah, as I'm feeling that detent, if it were a flipper, I'd want the detent to be stronger. So they've tuned this very, very well to be a manual opener. There is a difference in the way that you set that detent for a flipper versus a manual opener. I just like it all the way around. Being able to pimp it a little bit with the Zerkutai, quite honestly, does add another layer and another uh, bit of characteristic to this. I really, really, really like the fact that they have beveled this to match the bevels that are in the frame and that are in the blade. It adds a little more depth and character to it as well. So you've got a great bit of color added to what I think is an overall sinister, just mean-ass looking knife. One thing that I discovered that I didn't expect was when I took the knife apart, uh, when I was putting it back together... This is not a fixed. I, I thought this was going to be somehow a fixed into this bolster. Um, but the uh, the Purvis logoed pivot uh, will actually turn. So you have to take a second to kind of tweak it back into place. Hold it there while you turn the pivot screw back into place. So just a little note. I mean, you're going to see that instantly when you go to, to uh, put the knife back together. Um it took me a second. I pretty much had everything. I was tightening everything down, getting everything to match to, to center the blade again. And then I realized, oh, no, that's all cockeyed. And, you know, what, what's I was trying to think of the other the other word for like, catty wampus. Is that <laughs> do people still use that anymore? Anyway, I saw that it wasn't aligned and I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. A little bit of the uh, the lube is coming out from inside the pivot as well uh, but so yeah just uh, hold that in place once you've got it centered uh, just go ahead and hold it in place nice and tight when you screw down the uh, the pivot screw and you're good to go but whether you choose to do the upgrade or not I mean that's just purely aesthetic it doesn't do anything to make the knife any better it doesn't make it any more lightweight it doesn't make it any more heavy because uh, zircotai basically is a Damascus of different titaniums along with zirconium and then it's uh, flamed to bring out the color. If you've never owned Zircotai, Mokotai, Timascus, Damtanium, any of any of this type of material, uh, it'll start to lose its color as you touch it more and more and more. All you do is spray a little Windex on it, wipe it down, and it brings the colors right back nice and vivid. So the little trick there, in case you didn't know it. Uh, but it doesn't do anything to make the knife any better. It's purely an aesthetic. It's a visual. Uh, it's a pimping, if you will. It's a dress up. And quite honestly, I like that kind of stuff. You guys know that about me. But I was perfectly happy with it the way it was all blacked out. So it's really going to be a personal choice. But overall, I feel the knife is a great value. It's great, easy carry, lightweight, compact. It's everything that you want an EDC knife to be. In fact, some people might find it unsettling how lightweight it is. And I've only experienced that twice. This knife and the old Marfione Custom. God, what was it? Oh, I'm blanking on the name of it right now. I know I'm going to think of the Matrix, the Mini Matrix. There was a Mini Matrix that was done in all carbon fiber. And it was so lightweight. I'm like, oh, this kind of feels cheap. It wasn't. It was like a $1,200 knife. But actually, there was the full-size matrix that I bought. I reviewed many matrixes, but I owned a full-size. 
And it, it felt cheap. It wasn't very clearly, and it wasn't built cheaply, but carbon fiber is so lightweight that when you don't add other materials to it, it remains extremely lightweight. And this is kind of the same thing. It's so lightweight that it's shocking. And I think, honestly, in this day and age where we see so many overbuilt knives, so many knives that are made to be heavy and crazy, that I find it to be somewhat refreshing. So it just depends on what your needs and desires are. But for me, this knife is an absolute winner. Congratulations to Adam on another great success. These are already selling extremely well. By the time this video comes out, he will have already had these on sale for a week. He might even be sold out by now. Who knows? But go check out his website. That is linked down below. Go check out his Instagram. Every time he comes out with a new design, every time he's going to be producing it, He's very, very good about promoting it and advertising and explaining it on his Instagram. So definitely do follow him there. Follow me as well at Skelton Blade Works, of course. And then uh, once again, uh, Patreon. Thank you guys for consistently, you guys, so many people are signing up for the Patreon. It's so great. It's going to allow me to afford many more uh, customs. I've got several on order right now. And a lot of those customs will be put up as giveaways, you will get a chance as a Patreon member, as a patron, to get a free knife. Uh, I'll tell you right now, one of the customs I have being made is over $2,000, and somebody is going to get the chance to get that sometime in the next, I don't know, year, or whatever the knife gets made and actually gets here. One of the patrons is going to get a chance to get that. So go over to my Patreon. That's right down there below. Hello, little wiggly finger. Right down there below. Go sign up. You can, you know, you can do it cheaply. You can, you can go for the gusto, whichever way you want to go. Everybody will be qualified. Obviously, the the, the bigger patron you are, uh, you get multipliers, and you get uh, five times and ten times, or two times and five times, uh, the amount of entries into each of the uh, giveaways. So. That's entirely up to you. I've got more videos coming. Very soon, I'm going to show you guys uh, my custom collaboration, Cylon, my flashlight design made by uh, Focus Design Works. I'm extremely excited. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I've been inundating you with that. You've seen a lot of that. Uh, I will be showing those and detailing everything about them very shortly. But until then, I'll see you guys on the next video.